Masterpieces are outstanding creations worthy of a place in history. They are the works of art we can't stop thinking and talking about. Art's meant to make a difference. These are pieces that continue to do so long after the artist is gone. I'm Lady K Flo. This is where I give you my quick takes on art pieces I call the masters. Yellow, Red, Blue by Vasily Kandinsky I love Yellow, Red, Blue from 1925 because it's such a joyful Kandinsky. The colors explode across each side of the canvas. In fact, it almost feels like two paintings. There's a brilliant box of sunshine to our left, while a bountiful trumpet of pinks, purples, and blues blows into the sky on our right. When he painted this, Kandinsky was also teaching painting and color theory. He combined these subjects with elements of form psychology. That means he composed emotional orchestrations out of colorful shapes. We all know the color yellow and what a square is. These are familiar visual fundamentals. The simplicity of color and shape combine to resonate complex feelings. After all, boxes and lines are basic, but human emotions snowball with complications. That's why yellow, red, blue feels elaborate and emotive, though it's only colors and lines. The side on our left glows bright and boxy. It feels clean, direct, and fresh. This left side lines up with clear verticality. Whenever I look at this piece, I see a bottle of yellow liquid on the left. On the right side of this masterpiece, Kandinsky painted more abstract and dark shapes. When I connect this wicked flourish on the right with the clean bottle on the left, I see a story. This story has a surreal Alice in Wonderland vibe. A character drinks from the yellow bottle on our left, and the results burst into the party on our right. Luckily, Kandinsky wrote with clarity about color and its meaning. In 1911, he published the book Concerning the Spiritual in Art. This writing explored his ideas about color's effect on human emotions. Kandinsky explains that violets represent morbidity, or sorrow. Notice that this painting rests on a purple cloud along the left side. The towering yellow bottle contrasts with this amorphous billowing lavender. They oppose each other in both color and form. Purple and yellow are opposite ends of the color spectrum. A cloud couldn't be much more different from a sharp edged rectangle. Kandinsky's yellow meant warmth and excitement, so I love how he seems to have bottled these feelings on the left side of yellow, red, blue. Then the yellow swirls into a gray sun and leaps across the 12-foot painting. It blooms on the far right. This creates a frame of purple and yellow around the shapes in the painting's middle. Also, the color variance reinforces the theme of this as two paintings in one. That's because they're complementary colors. The left frame feels like a downer to Kandinsky, while the right side frame signals ebullience. Blue was Kandinsky's favorite color. He saw blues as cool and deep, like the ocean or the supernatural. That's where I get the Alice in Wonderland impression. This painting's a trip across emotions and we're carried there by a mysterious drink. The blue area evokes a glorious circle of wonder on our right. There's also a red semicircle beside the blue. 
but the red works more like a messy guidepost that directs our eye to that big blue orb. This transition makes sense given Kandinsky's concept of red. He sees reddish hues as seeking aspirations. So red serves him as an escort, in theory as well as in this painting. Even in the painting title, red sits in the middle, like a transitional feature. The story flows through these colors, like a drink flows through a character's body. It starts with a soft violet sadness. Then, with our eye traveling left to right, a bright yellow drink rises high to overtake the scene. That encapsulates the left side of the painting. The right side conveys the liquid's after effects. At first, it's a bit muddied and reddish. There's a mix of colors and forms that lead our eyes straight to the big blue marble. This glorious cobalt ball feels like the hero of the story. It carries our character out of sorrow and into a more celestial place. There's peace and serenity rather than tears in Kandinsky's blue. That gives yellow, red, blue a happy ending. In fact, every time I see this masterpiece, it's a joy. Yellow, red, blue, FAQs. Where can I see Kandinsky's yellow, red, blue in person? You can see the painting Yellow, Red, Blue by Vasily Kandinsky at the Musée National d'Art Moderne, Centre Georges Pompidou, Paris, France. It's an overwhelming glory at about 12 feet wide. Best of all, it exerts jubilance. I can't help but feel happy when I'm lucky enough to visit this masterpiece in person. What do colors mean in Vasily Kandinsky's special color theory? The book Concerning the Spiritual and Art by Vasily Kandinsky outlines his color theories. He breaks down each color into emotions and musical instruments. For example, blue evokes coolness and something deep, innermost or supernatural. It's linked with flutes for bright blues and cellos and organs for darker blues. Yellows read warm and thrilling and are associated with trumpets. Green hues feel still and peaceful, but with a resonant underlayer of strength. They are associated with a soft violin sound. White evokes a silence rich with possibilities. Black is a hopeless abyss of silence. Gray shades represent immovability or something unchanging. Reds are vital and strive towards goals, also associated with trumpets, just like yellows. Brown represents dullness, hardness, and repression. Orange shoes are radiant. They feel healthy and bright. These are associated with alto singers and mid-range church bells. Violets represent sorrow and are associated with the English horn and the bassoon. Kandinsky's 1925 painting, Yellow, Red, Blue, illustrates these color theories in vibrant action. It also includes a gray sun with a yellow frame around it. This perfectly reveals how the sun is always there for us, unchanging, while it also warms us with life-giving yellow light day after day. Masterpieces are written and recorded by Lady K Flow. If you like this podcast and want to hear more like it, the greatest compliment you can give is to tell a friend. And subscribe to Lady K Flow on Apple, Google, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks.
Visit LadyKFlo.com for all the goods. That's L-A-D-Y-K-F-L-O dot com.